Use your Android device as a Bluetooth intervalometer remote for your iPhone. The iPhone 12 Pro Max native camera app has a time-lapse function, but it only works for video time-lapses. I've only used it a few times to see the image quality it produces. Although it's pretty good it doesn't really compare to capturing photos for time-lapses. Especially when the output it records in video is only 1080p HD resolution. With photographs you can get above 4K resolution. Also the lack of interval control isn't helpful for my purposes. Being able to capture in a raw image format is important to me and allows a lot more leeway in regards to dynamic range, editing and capturing finer detail. The iPhone's time-lapse video mode doesn't allow you to capture separate images and its HD video format doesn't quite compare to a photographic image regarding detail. Some third-party camera apps have a built-in time-lapse function that can capture raw photos. But they don't capture long exposure images in a raw format. I've found that only Apple's native camera app using its night mode feature can capture up to 30 seconds long exposure in a raw format. This is my workaround in order to capture long exposure raw images for time lapses using the iPhone's native camera app. Android app install and set up. On an Android phone you can download and install two apps that will turn your Android device into a Bluetooth intervalometer remote to trigger your iPhone. One app is called Bluetooth Remote Shutter. An app which allows you to connect to an iPhone via Bluetooth and allow you to trigger the camera app's shutter button using the iPhone's volume button signal to trigger the shutter. The second app is called Intervalometer, which is an app that works by overlaying a position adjustable target on your display that will act as a virtual button press on screen at set intervals. For this app to work and trigger the Android camera you need to ensure that the camera app used is displayed for the shutter button to be triggered. But to trigger the iPhone it's the Bluetooth remote shutter app that needs to be shown on the Android screen underneath the intervalometer overlay. On first use of the intervalometer, it will guide you to change some Android accessibility settings as part of its initial setup. To allow it to overlay the screen and to trigger any underlying app. Once this setup is done, all you need to do from now on when starting the intervalometer is choosing the total number of photos that you'd like to capture and the intervals or time between each photo taken. Triggering the iPhone Open the Bluetooth Shutter app and scan for your iPhone device so make sure that its Bluetooth is active. The first time you do this can take a little time. You may have to pair the iPhone and your Android device first via their Bluetooth settings if you have any issues connecting via the app. Also there's no guarantee that all Android devices will be compatible with both of these apps. 
especially on older or lower budget mobile phones. If you have already connected to your iPhone previously, then you can simply use the app's Connect Last device which should connect within seconds. When the iPhone's connected via Bluetooth, the app's take a photo text will turn red. When you touch this text the app will then trigger the iPhone to take a photo. You can use this method to activate any iPhone camera app that allows the volume button to trigger the camera shutter. For photographic time lapses on the Android phone, open up the Bluetooth remote shutter app and connect to your iPhone's Bluetooth. Then open the intervalometer app and then switch back to the Bluetooth remote shutter app to display it on the screen. Select the red target icon on the overlay and a red circle will appear. Using your finger, drag or move this circle target to cover a part of the Bluetooth remote shutter app's red take a photo text. On the intervalometer app screen overlay window, set up your time-lapse interval and total number of frames that you'd like to take. Then select start when you're ready to start the time-lapse capture. If you were using an Android phone to capture a time-lapse, then you would position the intervalometer app's red circle target over the shutter button of any camera app that you've chosen to use to give it time-lapse functionality. Long Exposure Roar on the iPhone For iPhone long exposure raw captures, allow up to an additional 8 to 10 seconds for the native camera app to record the image. So for a 30 second exposure I would set the interval to 38 or 40 seconds to ensure that the iPhone's maximum 30 second exposure is captured correctly. Anything shorter may interrupt the frame capture and shorten the exposure time. As the iPhone can take a few seconds to process and save each night mode image taken. Also, if the iPhone detects any slight vibration, it will automatically reduce the shutter speed to a shorter exposure time, such as 10 seconds. So, it can take a second or two for the iPhone to stabilize and allow the maximum 30 second shutter speed to return before taking the next photo. This will introduce flicker into the sequence and make it difficult to edit out in post. Flicker is caused by the difference in exposures between frames, which can be an issue when trying to smooth out the image sequence as any large exposure differences can also affect the amount of image noise in the lower exposed image as well as the amount of low light detail captured. Make sure to put the Android phone into flight mode and restrict any notifications which may interfere with the display. The Bluetooth remote shutter app needs to always be showing on screen below the overlay, otherwise the time-lapse capture will be interrupted, even though the intervalometer will keep on working as it continues to virtually press the same area regardless. A few times when moving the Android phone, I have accidentally touched the phone's home button causing the Bluetooth shutter app to hide or another app to appear on screen. The Android display will remain on due to the constant virtual button presses. So it's important that you are continually charging the Android remote trigger phone to last through an all-night session as well as the iPhone used for the capture. The use of these two Android apps allows me more versatility regarding capturing time lapses when using the iPhone's native camera app to shoot RAW at long exposures. Sure, some mobile phones aren't as good as dedicated cameras, but some are getting pretty darn close. <laughs>